retreat is ready, it's time to go pick up our friends. tradition here that we name every latte art so what do you name your latte oh, I just call all the ones that are un undiscernible Baymax <laughs> <laughs> Today we've had our coffee, we've enjoyed our beach time, we've enjoyed our fellowship, but today is garden planting day. You are so in your element right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, okay. Start showing this art. <laughs> <Buddy. laughs> And we were gonna plant yesterday, but we ended up not planting. And today is planting day. They're gonna help me plant my garden and I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. Jess is totally in her element. And she's like, how much do you want me to be the boss of this? And I was like, you just, you just do it. And then we can maybe bring the broad beans down some and do the peas along the rest of this. All right, so today is garden planting day. We are out here deciding where everything should go. And we're gonna talk a little bit about like the mentality behind why we're doing what we're doing. <laughs> but Jess has basically taken hold of the <laughs> ship. <laughs> Tell us. Yes, she did. So the thing with a fall garden it, that is different than a spring garden, it would be a little bit different what you would have to take into consideration with the spring. With a fall garden, you're not like having to consider waves of harvest coming in and ripeness. Now the only thing that we're planting that would need that consideration is these beans because you want to have enough beans ripe at the same time that you can actually make dinner. Mm -hmm. Like you're not like having yeah. five beans yeah. that you're like, okay, tell me we'll split yeah. two and a half each. You know, like you yeah. want to plant enough and but otherwise, you know, it's not like a lot of times in the spring you're having to think of your cucumbers all coming in at once and you're considering, do I want to can them or what am I going to do with all of these? But with a fall garden, like we can come in and plant all this at once because with your root vegetables and your leaves, you just harvest them smaller mm -hmm. and you eat them and you just leave them out here mm -hmm. in the ground and you come and get them as you need them. And there's this nice window before they get too big and they start losing texture that you just eat straight out of the garden. And that's really that's my free. Thing. Yeah, it's really free, especially if you're in a suburban area where you don't have a lot of storage. Mm -hmm. And so for us, like looking through these seeds, it's like, okay, let's just slam pack every inch of this garden mm -hmm. because it's a fall. Yeah. So you can do that. Mm -hmm. I love that idea too, because it's so different from how I've done it in the past where I'm like, oh, I can plant 186 things right. in a square foot garden, but then I have two beans for dinner <laughs> right? and like a tomato yeah. sometimes. And so being able to, a little bit more expansively with like fewer seeds right 
is is nice. I'm yeah. looking forward to that. But yeah, you kind of, like for me, when I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking, how much do I want to put in here? Like we were just talking about these beans, and we're like, okay, we'll do a few rows of these compactly so that when you come to harvest beans, you're actually harvesting a whole dinner's worth yeah. for you two. Mm -hmm. And with the roots, it's the same thing. You're going to harvest this, or plant this nice long row, and I'm considering, okay, the first four that you harvest, they're going to be smaller, so you're going to need more, but then as they get bigger, you'll need to harvest fewer. Mm -hmm. And I just keep that in mind as I'm putting this stuff in. <laughs> You're like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being so much more cautious with your garden than I am with mine. With mine, I'm like, swing it in there. <laughs> You're gonna hate this when you have to thin these. And I'm like thinking of you that you're gonna be like eight months pregnant. Be careful for Natalie. This is my I'm consideration gentle. for your pregnant body. I'm not so kind to of future Jessica whatever I I do the whole trench and pour a whole back in when it's for my room. Jill actually got me this little journal, oops, this little journal, and it's gonna be my map for the garden. Yes. And I'm going to plant with you, but also write down what yeah. you guys are yeah. planting. I think that's really good, because I don't do that. I, I literally, there's no we rhyme just, or reason <laughs> how it happens. just plant a little surprise party. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes whenever you get seeds from seed companies, they will have tested the germination rates and they will put a note on there like if they are overpacked due to low germination. And if you're planting seeds that are more than maybe like two years old, you might want to go ahead and do this as well. I planted seeds that are 10 years old and grown them, but the germination can start to decline after a couple of years in storage. And so I just automatically assume that it's going to be lower germin germination, and so I sow a little thicker. And with the case of these peas, Jill was noticing what it said, and she was like, I think I'm going to sow these a little thicker. The cool thing with peas is you can actually harvest these shoots. So when you thin, just bring scissors out, mm -hmm. cut them off at the soil, and those are great in salads or Asian stir fries. Mm -hmm. So like, sometimes I will purposefully over sow my peas, yeah. planning on thinning mm -hmm. them, and the ones I thin, I eat young, and the ones I leave, I grow up to actually get pods. Yeah, yeah, because essentially that is what my pea shoots are that I grow from my Yeah. I feel like I have little garden angels here. <laughs> I can tell you right now, though, like you did not need to be doing this, like leaning over like this. Yeah. Stop here because I put those nasturtiums right there. Okay, I'll build you a little stop here wall. <laughs> Do you, does anybody, like I build little maps for myself and yes. mulch in my bed. <laughs> like this stick. I do, like you can come out right after I plant my garden and there's little mulch boxes all over because I like space them. <laughs> Uh, turnips and then two things of the ruby queen beets so okay. lettuce turnips beets how's that coffee so good <laughs> <laughs> your dangly sleeves look so magical in <laughs> rigid wind <laughs> and i was just thinking about the fact that like i got dressed for the day <laughs> It's not the first time that I've done gardening that dirty size of clothes. Here's what our map is looking like so far. Baby, I don't Another thing that I do when I'm sewing, and this is just one of those things that makes sense to me, 
like I I do my sections in rows and I'll use markers as stopping points so like right here like you'll notice when the stuff comes up that I sew <laughs> like the row goes to yep. this point and then that's where I start another one for me it's the posts on my bed mm. like that's my stopping point <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, like, I mean, that's how I like keep in my mind so that when I'm putting those seeds in, I'm not over sowing an area. I know where to stop and start is I just look at like points that I can use as markers.